When people ask me how they can take better notes, I can't help but think that they're focusing on the wrong thing. I take a lot of notes and I enjoy it, but the notes aren't the point, the learning is. I think of notes as learning exhaust, necessary byproducts of me acquiring a new skill or understanding a new idea. Notes chronicle the path that I take while I'm learning, even if that involves a few detours. In this video, I'm going to show you a real life example of how I went from reading a book, Emergence by Steven Johnson, to taking notes on it, and then finally to understanding it enough to apply it to my own interests, all the while creating learning exhaust. Last November, I attended the very first cohort of the Visual Thinking Workshop that was run by my friend Zolt Vitsian. Zolt is the developer of the Obsidian Excaladraw and Excalibrain plugins, and he's very much into the whole visual PKM space. That's not something that comes naturally to me. I don't really think visually like that. I think more verbally. And so I thought that it was a really interesting exercise. And in that workshop, everybody chooses a book together. And in my cohort, it was Emergence. I read Emergence and I was immediately captivated by that idea. And I also immediately knew that if I didn't impose some sort of responsibility or obligation for me in the future regarding it, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to dig into it the way that I really wanted to. So after the cohort, I actually applied to talk at a conference about emergence and I was kind of skipping ahead a little bit. I wanted to talk about emergent load testing. That's the field that I'm in for work. So that was just a little bit of extra motivation for me to carry me down this path. So here's the path that I ended up taking. So I actually ended up reading the book twice, once in November and then once again in February, I wanted to reread some sections that I didn't remember very clearly and I hadn't yet processed the notes from the year before. You know how it goes. So I actually have two different pages for highlights for it. One is just a normal highlights. They went into Readwise, which is how I normally process things because Readwise connects to my Amazon Kindle account and then just brings in the things that I've highlighted. So I have one note for that. And then Sometime late last year, I also got a Kindle Scribe, which is the latest Kindle that Amazon sells. The Kindle Scribe has the ability to let you handwrite notes, not in the margins, but kind of like in post-it notes and also draw. And because I had just taken this visual thinking workshop, I did kind of let myself doodle a little bit more than I normally would have. Unfortunately, there is no way to send those anywhere, really. You have to email the PDF to yourself. You can't send it to Readwise. So then I have a PDF in Obsidian that also has my notes from the Kindle with my doodles. And then based on those two things, I created like an overall book note, which is a summary of the book, the author's point of view, his main arguments, his, the weaknesses of his arguments. From there, I created an abstract note, and the point of this note was not to rehash what the author had said. The point of the note is to express things in my own words and also to start to piece together what it might mean, this idea, in comparison to other ideas that already exist in my notes. And then I created two different applied notes. So I applied it to two different fields that I'm interested in. One is note taking and one is load testing. And I thought about what it might mean for load testing and for note taking to be emergent. So this is a very typical flow of how I learn something that I want to really dig into. This idea of understanding the context that the author sets and then abstracting what I can out of it and then reapplying it to different contexts. Because I find that if I don't do the application part, then it's not really going to be relevant for me. In every single part of this process, I created learning exhaust. For starters, all of these notes are publicly available on my Obsidian Vault. That's notes.nicolevanderhoeven.com if you want to check it out. And I also did kind of ancillary things like posts on Mastodon and videos and writing and stuff like that. Let me show you that now. 
So here's what my highlights looked like. These are the ones that went directly from Readwise and into Obsidian. I was taking notes on the different parts and this was just as I was reading, I was going through it and just on my Kindle, actually highlighting it with my finger. And then the other thing was my notes on the Kindle Scribe. So this is what it looks like. This is a PDF though, because as I said, it doesn't go into Readwise, it's not marked down. So there are still some highlights where it's just text, but every now and then I also have like some doodles as I was trying to understand an idea. This was kind of cool because usually I would try to visualize an idea later after I've understood it. This was the first time that I was able to think about how to visualize something before I'd even finished the book. And that's something that this Kindle scribe is actually really good for. So here are some other doodles and also just some handwritten notes because it's kind of nice to do things in a more analog way as well. The unfortunate thing is that this is an, a PDF, so there's no way to like just take this picture. So I took screenshots of it because I wanted to bring them over into the next stage. I'll be honest though, at this stage, I hadn't really processed anything. And this is why it was so good that I had done that thing previously where I applied to speak at a conference because it really restarted a lot of my passion for it. And because I knew that I was going to have to do it eventually, I went back to it. So, cause around this stage, I was accepted into that conference. This is my Macedon post saying that it had been accepted. And so, you know, now I had a date. So then I went back to actually, you know, processing the notes. So this is my book note for emergence. And it's quite long because this is everything that I thought was useful from what the author said, but this is already in my words. So the first part was like highlights and stuff, but this is like my handwritten notes and my doodles. I didn't take all of them, but I took a lot of them. And I generally followed this thesis, antithesis and synthesis kind of format. By the way, this is a template that is available to my Patreon. In the thesis part, I talked about the main points that Steven Johnson hit. So like criteria for emergence, I identified that these were those things that he felt were likely to facilitate emergence. And then some other ideas like the bottom up approach being linked to swarm logic. And he did actually talk about emergent software, which I found particularly interesting. Also in thesis, I talked about similar ideas. So this was not strictly speaking things that he had mentioned. I did just want to link it to some things that I was already interested in. And look, there's napkin there as well and artificial intelligence, things that I knew I already had notes on. Then I have this antithesis section where I talked about kind of the weaknesses of his arguments and the things that I was already picking apart as maybe not having been fleshed out very much. So there are things like, you know, emergence is just chaos that's been given enough time or like that it takes too much time to be useful or unpredictable, too unpredictable to be useful. And then I thought about how I could kind of reconcile the thesis and antithesis portions in the synthesis. So I thought about, you know, what situations emergence might be better than the opposite, which I thought should be something like a reductionist hierarchy. So this is me trying to figure out what the author meant in my mind and already the beginnings of trying to incorporate it into my head and into my knowledge base. And then, of course, that day that I first wrote that note or, you know, the first draft of it, I posted it on Mastodon so that I could also put it out there for other people. I really love letting people into my learning process like this. So this is a link to my Obsidian Publish, which just links to the same note that I just showed you just in a public format. So now for the abstracted note, this is my note on emergence, but emergence as it means to me. This isn't so much about summarizing what Steven Johnson said. This is just me trying to remove it from the context a little bit because it was a lot about evolution and biology and stuff. And so I wanted to kind of pull back something that I would be able to apply later on. So what I did end up taking were the factors that facilitate emergence. And I kind of made them a little bit more general here and 
added some of my own. Like he didn't really talk about agency. He didn't really use the word agency, but I put that in anyway. He definitely didn't say federated communication, but this is me expressing it in language that I already use. And then I thought the question of when emergence is the best option is also useful for me. Now, this was a lot longer, but I also just decided to like separate these out. So I have this note on the disadvantages of emergence because there was enough there that I wanted to separate it out. And then I also created this note emergence in other fields. So I was thinking of like how to apply it and which fields that I wanted to actually talk about it in the context of. So I decided it was emergence in tech. So I created a note on emergent software as well. And you'll see it kind of spiders out, right? Like this is the problem that there are so many and I identified some that I haven't even delved into. And even things like emergence in play, play being something that encourages emergent behaviors or seniors, the fact that learning in public really facilitates a type of emergence that occurs within a community. So yeah, as you can see, I'm still excited about those things, but I had to stop somewhere. I then took to Mastodon again and showed off that very note. And also in particular, the section where I had some of the learning exhaust so people could follow along like where I was in the process. And after I shared this, I then added, you know, the things that came afterwards. At this point, I had already started to create my slides, but they weren't fully formed yet. As for the applied note, I already showed you one on emergent software. I was actually just going to talk about the software in general at that level. But then I thought that that was too broad because I would have wanted to talk about AI a little bit more. The whole decentralization and federation thing, I'm very big into Mastodon these days. So that could have been an area of interest for me, but I decided to focus on emergent load testing. And so then I created this applied note on what exactly that means. This isn't the slides yet for my presentation, but this is still just a note. And you'll see that I took a lot of this and put it into my slides. In general, I talked about like the history of how testing and how code might be shifting or could shift from different types of code, imperative, declarative, and maybe generative. Then I talked about, you know, the range for generative load testing, which I think are the affordances of an application. So you can see that I'm also bringing in ideas from some other notes, but I'm trying not to talk too much about those in this video because I want to trace how this emerged idea went through my entire vault system and the stuff that I created from it. So then I updated that note and I started to create a presentation. And this is what that looks like in my Obsidian publish. But it wasn't like this when I first started. At first, it was just like a bunch of really rough topics and sections. So actually, what I did was something like this. I just want to show you if I have a new note here, I started it off and I would actually embed some of the things from my existing notes. So I would say, for example, this is emergence and I wanted to bring in a system of organized complexity. So I'd bring that in and then I would have that as one slide and I would just do the three ticks and then I would do another section. And then I kind of just built it out like this and it was super rough. It was already embedding sections from notes that I already had. So that's the cool part. When you follow this process, you're not actually starting from scratch. You're not looking at a blank page and wondering what, what you're going to put in it. It's just a matter of like rearranging things that you already have. So that's what I did. And then eventually I did delete the actual embeds and create a, an entirely new presentation because I kind of tweaked the approach to make it a little less verbose, you know, to add images. And let me show you what that looks like. So this is the presentation and or at least what it looks like in Obsidian. You'll see, I then went back and added styles and, you know, just some things that have to do with the transition for the slides. I added images and stuff. This is using the advanced slides plugin. 
You can also do this with the core plugin slides. However, it's not as fully featured, like you can change the background and the styles and stuff. Let me show you what it does look like in advanced slides. So I'm doing the slide preview now. Let me remove the grid. And this is how that looks. So this is a title page and I can step through it like this just by using the arrow keys. But I can also click open in browser and it looks like this. And then I can also have like the speaker notes here. And so while I'm reading it, I, I can have this on, you know, my monitor and then this window being projected or something. And then I can still go through it here on the top right here. I can see what slide is coming next. I can go through all of the things that the notes that I'd put here as speaker notes. I can restart the time, which is really cool so that I, I went through a lot of these like timed runs. So I would get an idea for how much I was going to spend on certain slides and at what point I should be halfway through and that kind of thing. So then I actually published that slide presentation online because you can export it as HTML. And what it looks like is exactly what I just showed you when I was running through it locally, except now this is on my domain. So it's on slides.nicolevanderhoeven.com. And this was the way that I was able to post it on Mastodon. I was like, I was doing this for a while, I think, all the way up to just the night before the actual presentation. And for the days leading up to the talk, I was like posting it to different people in public forums and also like in DMs and, and stuff to get some reviews. And I thought that the reviews were invaluable. And finally, I did the talk. So this is me actually delivering it in KubeCon EU. And you might think that some of these slides are familiar because I was just using the same thing that I was showing you. So that was really cool. And the other cool thing is that after this talk, I actually got some people who had been following me on Obsidian and they came up and said like, oh yeah, that was so cool. I see that you changed that thing on the slides because last night I saw that you posted it on Mastodon and um, responded to a comment that somebody had made on it. And that was so cool that they had been able to see the difference and that they had appreciated that I'd adjusted based on feedback. That is one of the best parts about learning in public. So then the other applied note that I created was on emergent note taking, my other big interest these days. And this one isn't as fleshed out. I talked about Zettelkasten and I also talked about Napkin because I think Napkin is a tool that really facilitates emergence. I just did a video on it, but you can check out more about it here. I did manage to link it though to a few other things. I've already written a lot about Zettelkasten and I think there's a lot of overlap between that and emergent note taking as well as this concept of atomic nodes and the bottom up approach. So I didn't feel the need to write as much about it. However, this is still an application of the same abstracted idea of emergence. And what I did with this is that I created a video. So this is like my internal task note for the video. And um, this is how I script videos. It's all like bullet points. Um, I script the intro and outro, and I have things like timestamps and a checklist of things to do. You maybe already watched this, but if you haven't, then I'm gonna leave a link to it over there. All of the notes that I've shown you are also in themselves learning exhaust because I've published them all on Obsidian Publish. But another thing that I haven't talked about is changelog. So I got this idea from like software when you have a repository of code, you often have like a changelog of new features that you've added. So I really like this idea of doing that for my notes because they're constantly changing. So I actually publish the last 300 notes that I've worked on or modified to some significant degree. There are things that I exclude from this, like my role-playing games, because honestly, that would dominate this entire list. So these are like the more serious things that I work on. You can check it out if you wanna see what I've been thinking and the stuff that I've been creating. So I'm also filtering out the actual source material. So these aren't things Things that I've read. These are all notes that I've actually written. So it's a nice way to see what's occupying my attention these days. I am using for this a plugin called Vault Changelog. However, I am using a forked version of it, a fork that I did, 
because I wanted to add this excluded paths. I did create a PR to have it accepted into the repo, but I don't think it's being maintained anymore, unfortunately. So I'm just using my own fork for this plugin. I first read Emergence in November, and my last video on emergent note-taking was just released a few weeks ago. So that's five months. So yeah, it's been a long time and it is definitely time consuming. To be honest, I'm not even done yet. I definitely see this as a topic that I'll revisit over time and add to, and I'm sure my thoughts on it will change as well. That's part of the process, but I don't think that time consuming necessarily means tedious because from the very beginning, I was following my interests. I read Emergence and was captivated by it and wanted to take it further. So it was still very intrinsically motivated, not, you know, it wasn't because somebody else wanted me to do it. When you learn from a place of passion and curiosity rather than obligation, I think learning exhaust and, you know, creating content that is hopefully useful to others occurs almost without effort. If you'd like to see more about how I do this sort of thing, then check out this video where I go through how I take notes on online courses in Obsidian. Thank you for watching. Adli Melenge.